Hello, you beautiful people. Let's go over 15 advanced tips that you should and that I personally wish I knew sooner in Tower Fantasy. If you do end up finding this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Tip number one. And I don't know if it was only me, but I always, always wondering why my crit rate is always at 0%. Like, how do I increase it? And why do I sometimes crit even though I'm at 0% technically? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you actually click here where it says crit, not crit rate, you can actually see that it tells you your crit rate and what affects your crit rate everything that says crit and those are your mind matrices you know the ones that have crit as a main stat your weapons that have crit with them and be sure to look if your weapon or whatever weapon you have equipped comes with crit or not because it depends on the weapon some come with hp rather than crit and this is important because upgrading the weapon level increases their crit stat value increasing the level of your suppressor also gives you crit rate each level of your suppressor the fourth ascension will always give you crit rate please be sure to max that out so you can have the maximum amount of crit rate available for your character and lastly your gear can give you crit and we'll get more into gear in our next tip but in conclusion crit actually means crit rate and the value comes from everything you have equipped and why this stat is separate from crit rate i have no idea maybe one is inherent and the other one comes from stuff such as ascensions kind of like crow star levels but anyways do let me know in the comments if you have the answer or if i'm wrong and that goes for the whole video guys if i'm wrong or i made a mistake or i should have said something i will be updating a pinned comment with that down in the comments below tip number two is our gear and prioritization gear is one of the main ways to increase your damage in tower fantasy first thing i want to say is don't be like me and actually upgrade the gear star levels in order to increase the stats and i say this for gear that is not gold don't increase those stat star levels you should be only increasing your star levels for your gear if they're gold in my experience probably because i'm not farming efficiently or something but gear experience is kind of scarce if you decide to be papega like me and start upgrading everything it can actually run out really fast my gear prioritization advice to you guys is to focus on getting gold boots and gold gloves first the reason being is because these are the only two combat gears that can actually have a crit stat as a random stat so ideally in a perfect world you would want both of these gears to roll into crit all the way and maybe a couple of rolls into attack if you can't get crit all the way and so save all your materials for whenever you do get potentially good gears that are worth upgrading and then the next prioritization would be getting every other gear gold and rolling attack followed by your preferred elemental attack and in this order because attack is general and elemental attack rolls can cause your gear to become niche and if you are a low level player trying to farm for gear please please do not do joint operations until you can actually have a chance at getting gold gears dropping. But if you still want purple gear for some reason, then you do you, it's your account. I'm just here suggesting stuff. But speaking of joint operations and gear, tip number three is me letting you know that the recently gear drops have been data mined and the rates have been given to us for global. And if you wanna be efficient and more importantly, have time to do this. It is suggested that you only open the chest at the end after the last boss in the joint operation. This is the chest with the highest chance of giving you a gold equipment. So if you only spend vitality this way, only on the last chest, this helps you be efficient with your vitality spending and it makes you run out of joint operation tickets slower. The only thing that sucks is that it will take more time since you need to do like six joint operations in order to spend the whole 180, assuming you're only opening the last chest. And if you are a whale slash low spender, here's a side tip. Each day, use 50 dark crystals to buy a bottle of 60 vitality. That way it can build up and once you do land on a day where you're able to get either boots or gloves, you can go all in with your accumulated vitality and try to farm for that gold gear that will give you a crit random stat. But like I said, this is just a side whale tip. F2P, save your dark crystals, never ever refresh. Tip number four is a combat tip. Have you ever read your weapons and read their passive that is exclusive to their corresponding element? Like for example, fire making people burn, bolt stunning your enemies, frost freezing enemies, excluding bosses of course, and then physical with their grievous effect. Have you been wondering how it actually works? Because you can read it and think, oh, does this mean whenever I do a discharge? And the answer to that is no. When it talks about your weapons being fully charged, they mean that once the white bar around your weapons reaches the end, your next attack of the current weapon you have equipped right now will do whatever effect that belongs to their corresponding element. Let me show you. All right, so you can see I have fully charged. Now my next attack is gonna freeze this guy. Look at that. And I believe that's it. And I think if I switch to another guy, to another target, it won't freeze. Oh, see, it won't. So now I switch to Mero's weapon. 
And I'm gonna charge up again, fully charge, and they freeze again, see? You see that right there? So you have to fully charge your weapons. It cannot be due to Fantasia. Let me show real quick. So I got Fantasia, so my frig should freeze. But look at that, it does not. It does not freeze. And I believe it should be multiple enemies. Let me just check and make sure. Let me gather up a bunch of enemies with Frigg. And we're gonna do her thing. And well, they all died, but I think they should have frozen. All right, we have multiple enemies right here. Let's see if we can get more than one to freeze. Okay, there you go. In that instant, they all froze, but they died. But it did work, guys. So if you're able to do like an AOE attack, you can actually freeze multiple enemies whenever you, you know, you do your thing. And it doesn't have to be, you know, this effect. It can be the effect of whatever weapon. Whether it be volt attacks with the stunning, fire weapons with the burning, and then with physical weapons, the grievous effect. Okay, so if you've ever wondered about that, there it is. Now you can purposefully do your effects without thinking that it only happens randomly or with every discharge. Tip number five is another combat tip. And this is something I feel like a lot of people do not know, but it can be niche depending on you. In Tower of Fantasy, there are some relics that once you click on it to activate it, you have to aim somewhere else and then click again in order to actually activate the action of the relic. Why is this important? Well, sometimes depending on your team and depending if you actually have time or you want to just do this, change up your rotations, I don't know. But sometimes you're on a weapon that has a good discharge ability, but you activate Fantasia or end up charging it before you get a chance to switch. And then you're like, oh no, I wanted to use Frigg's discharge, but now I can't because if I switch to a weapon, the discharge ability will get wasted on Subasa or Meryl, whatever. Well, you can get rid of this problem by switching to the relic. You're going to be in that aim mode and what that aim mode is going to let you do is actually switch to another weapon without using your discharge ability and then we go back to my example now that i know this i now have a chance to use the discharge but with my frig like i originally wanted like i said this is kind of niche but if you need to do this then go ahead do it but if you're good at managing your discharge abilities and your rotations then you really don't need this tip number six is another combat tip and that is shield if you did not know shielded enemies take 50 percent less damage from all sources there are a whole bunch of different types of shields depending on what enemy you fight there's enemies that have elementless shields these are your white shields this is fair game for everything you can use whatever weapon whatever shatter you want in order to take down the shield as fast as possible there's a physical shield this is a green shield Shield. do not use physical attacks to shatter and these shields also provide physical resistance so it really sucks using physical characters in order to take down the shields if the enemies have a weakness use that type of weapon in order to take down the shield the fastest or just use anything else that's not physical there's also pyro shields these are red shields and the same thing you know do not use fire weapons in order to shatter the shield and it provide also pyro resistance and it's going to be the same for every type of shields so pyro shields are red electric shields are purple Frost shields are blue. And then the scariest one is the multi shield. This is a gold type of shield that's resistant to like all the elements. And the best thing that's going to take down these shields depends on the enemy's weakness. Whatever weakness they have, that is the element you should be using to shatter and do damage to that enemy. So yeah, just know your shields, know what to use, know ahead of time, or don't be surprised if they have like a whole bunch of resistance or why you're not taking them out really fast. Tip number seven. And guys, this is important, especially if you're F2P or a low spender. And that is, you need to decide what element you want to main in Tower of Fantasy. At the time of this recording, we have our first Frig banner, but Claudia got announced and literally her banner is dropping just two weeks after the Frig banner was dropped. This pace that they're creating in Global is really fast. And if you're trying to get every character, it's going to cost a lot of crystals or a lot of money. But when I say focus on an element, I mean what is going to be your team in the end game. For example, I'm picking Frost. I want to main Frost, so for me, I picked up Frigg because of her resonance and utility, and I kind of went hard on her banner because in my opinion, it was worth it for my account. Then, if I wasn't a content creator, I would say, oh, Claudia's coming, yeah, hard skip, hard pass. I'm not building physical because my end goal is to have a team that consists of Frigg, Takifua, and Lin. And these are characters that have already come out in the China server. And guys, what you have to understand is once we do get to the end game, there's really only a need to main one element. It's not like Genshin Impact where you need different types of elements on your team in order to make a certain strategy work. Chinese veterans who have played for a long time 
only main one type of elemental team maximum they do have two they do have a second team a second element that they have on backup in case they need to cover their weaknesses or if there's content in the game that like resists like a hundred percent or i'm just exaggerating right there but like 50 or 75 percent of resistance to their main element so personally i'm probably going to end up maining frost and most likely physical but if you're f2p or a low spender figure out your end game team and work slash save for that team or element you enjoy the most because at the end of the day it's all about enjoying the game tip number eight is going to be found in void rifts and guys this might be an obvious one that a lot of people know but honestly i don't know if it was just me or if i just skipped some tutorial which i probably did but when you are collecting buffs before facing a boss and maybe you're running a nice team and you have useless flame boosting buffs or volt buffs you can actually click right here and transfer buffs to your other teammates and check what buffs they have as well this kind of helps you type in the chat like hey can i have frost buff please or you can ask somebody who needs physical or who needs a vault damage buff just try and coordinate with your team even if they are random so that way you guys have an easier time defeating the boss and so you have a better chance of not running out of time tip number nine and this is something more people should know whenever you're in any type of co-op mode and you see someone and you need to revive them especially when they're raising their hand desperately calling you please revive me please i feel like some people do not want to revive because they kind of think like oh it's gonna lock me in an animation and i'm gonna be vulnerable and then the boss is gonna kill me and then i'm dead well i am here to tell you that that is not the case when you revive someone you do not have to stay next to them while you're waiting for that circle animation to finish just press the revive button and then run away or dodge they will still get revived and this can possibly save you from dying in the future so please go try this if you haven't already i promise it works revive people don't let people die especially if they're your hard carry or your healer just a friendly reminder guys if you're enjoying the video so far please give it a like and a subscribe and follow my twitch channel if you're interested in live content that is where i go mostly live and sometimes on youtube but please follow the twitch if you can tip number 10 while we're still talking about reviving people and that is you only get three chances of going down before you're just one shot it immediately so try to save those for the last boss do not go down in the first or in the middle section of whatever try not to go down in the beginning or the middle section of the enemies please save your downs your falls for the last boss because once you go down three times that's it it doesn't reset even if you reset the fight those three chances don't come back if you go in again the next time you lose health you're gonna go down immediately which kind of hinders your whole team's ability to just you know fin actually finish the fight so at that point if you guys have already gone down like three times and it's gonna be really difficult in order for you to finish off the boss and this sucks because you know that the drop rates the best drop rates are at the end if you can't even finish off the boss and you're just gonna have to reset and join another team of randoms or whatever so in case you did not know that or you were just wondering why i'm always getting one shot because you've already gone down three times in the whole dungeon domain whatever you want to call it tip number 11 is joining frontier clash recruitments if you have tried or attempted to do hard mode you know that this can be a challenge trying to go through every boss especially with randoms but if you party up with crewmates you will actually get a damage boost of 10 percent for each crewmate that joins you in order to do this frontier clash leading to potentially more loot per week and you want to try and be in as efficient as possible with those tries because you only get three a week so if you want a better chance of getting gear or even getting gear experience so you can feed it into your other gears that you need i highly recommend you join a crew if you have not already you get some crewmates you coordinate and you all join up so you can all take advantage of this damage boost tip number 12 is going to be found in your settings here are a couple of suggestions that can make your combat gameplay way smoother in tower fantasy your discharge abilities produce animations especially if you have the semi locker that matches their weapon together when you start off in the game these animations are nice you kind of want to see them i mean personally coming from like a game like genshin impact i love the zoom in animations each character has for their ultimate abilities but for people who are like mmo veterans who probably can care less about these animations especially in long fights you can turn off the setting right here where it says discharge skill animation turn it off and that way you'll never have to see it again it will never ruin your angles or anything like that another setting is getting rid of the hit frames right here here's footage from another channel Hellverse Z, please give them the credit they deserve. Check out their channel, subscribe to them if you like their content. But you can actually see that with the hit frame on, it's really laggy and you kind of like do less damage or it just takes longer for you to like actually get all your hits out. So I suggest you kind of turn off the hit frame. Honestly, I, I turn it off and especially because I'm a frig main and I'm doing a lot of damage, multi slashes and all that. It really help my gameplay smoother and I can just, uh, you know, do dish out more damage and it helps a lot. And any character that uses moves with a lot of numbers can benefit from this, such as Shiro, Frig, and of course Crow, just to name a few. 
Tip number 13 is something I had said from my beginner's guide, but I want to be more specific right now, and that is saving password chips. In my beginner's guide, I had said save it for experience, but honestly, the more important reason is that based from the China server, in a later patch, we're going to be getting a new currency that allows us to gotcha for more pools and resources, which is going to be kind of similar to the event we had earlier, the one that gave us a swimsuit. And if you did manage to get that swimsuit skin, you know it took quite a bit, unless you're lucky, of course, but for some of you, you have to go all the way. But yeah, that is going to be similar to something we're going to get later. So save up your password chips, and after the currency gets introduced, use as many as possible, go on a password chest spree, and I hope you get a bunch of resources to get a bunch of pools, and everything you need especially if you're an f2p player also as far as gold chips make sure you're only using them after level 40 because after level 40 your chances of acquiring matrices increase and if you are watching this before artificial island comes out please save your gold chips for the new boss because the new boss is going to be dropping some years matrices which are one of the best generic matrices you can have on your account i wish i knew this sooner i've only saved up five but i'm planning to use all my password chips and i want to try to get you know, the best chance I have in order to get some years matrices. Tip number 14 is AFK farming. AFK farming is possible by the character Zero. His orbs do damage over time around him and allows you to kill enemies such as flying wasp if you want to farm for honey or something. But the more important AFK farming you need is for vehicle mounts. Most of the parts are acquired by just playing the game, but every vehicle has a part that can only be acquired by killing a certain type of enemy. And what sucks is the drop rates are like ridiculously low, but having zero gives you a chance to do AFK farming because it can take a long time before you get the piece you're looking for. But if you just leave zero out there killing the enemies, the enemies will respawn and you'll just kind of rinse and repeat the cycle of zero killing them while you're not there. And you can just leave it on and just do other stuff while you're doing that AFK farming. Now, if you do not have zero, open your world chat and look for people who are recruiting or inviting people for AFK farming. You can join people who actually have zero and just be there for emotional support and try to get the drops that you need because you don't have to necessarily kill them as long as you're just there in the group, the whole group will get the drop or at least have the same chance to get the drop. And if you're lucky, well then you get it. And then you can just be like, see ya, I didn't even have zero, but thanks for the you know AFK farming invite. Tip number 15 is making sure you reach your daily limit of getting your support points. Honestly, I, I really didn't know this existed. I mean, I know it did exist. It was right there, but I like I never figured out how to get it because every week you can get 10 black nucleuses, you can get gold and you can get this stuff in order to upgrade your mounts. But most importantly, the black nucleuses every week. You never know when the black nucleus banner will give you an SSR. So basically you're kind of missing out on these SSRs potentially if you don't get these black nucleuses every week. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take and it's really easy to get these. All you have to do is just be low in vitality. So if I go right now, I don't have enough vitality to you know get the rewards but if i just join dimensional trials go to difficulty one it's gonna take like less than a minute in order to do this and i'll get 150 of those points every time you can do this or you can go to something like frontier clash you know go afk and then i think you get like 350 points when doing this and then actually you know guys if you create a team right here and you go press this button right here it actually tells you your daily cap every day and wh where you're at i'm like at 1050 right now and i just need about you know 450 more so i can do like three more of those uh dimensional trials or whatever i was talking about earlier and i'll finally reach the cap but yeah now that i found that out i'm definitely going to be doing this every day and trying to be as efficient as possible and especially the gold guys gold's gonna like run out like later especially when we like upgrade our stuff in the future like gold is gonna be very important so that is my tip number 15 for you guys one more time if you guys found this video useful please give the video a like guys and comment something it really helps the algorithm and subscribe for more guides in the future. On my channel, I'm trying to make more generic guides for Tower Fantasy, but I mainly do character guides and team showcases for both Tower Fantasy and Genshin Impact. So if you're interested in any of that content, please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell so that way you can support the channel and be notified for when my videos come out. And you can be one of the first ones there. I usually respond to the comments in like the first hour of the videos uploaded. My name is Hydrosam. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in the next video.